Welcome back to the Game Collection! Not too long ago, I reviewed Golden Sun, a Game Boy Advance RPG that punched above its weight class but left me feeling like it had so much potential to be bigger and better. And because it left on a bit of a cliffhanger, I couldn't wait to see where the story could go. So I think it's time I finally find out. I am Super Derek, and this is Golden Sun The Lost Age. Golden Sun The Lost Age is the second entry in the Game Boy Advance duology. It's a direct continuation of the story started in Golden Sun. Because of this, it's nearly impossible to talk about the plot or even to show much gameplay without revealing some spoilers from the first Golden Sun, so consider yourself spoiler warned. Anyway, the first Golden Sun ended with several loose ends yet untidied and a tease for a sequel. And you know what they say about cliffhangers. Golden Sun The Lost Age shifts focus from our initial quartet of heroes to Jenna, Creighton, and Felix adrift on the same island following the events of the first Golden Sun. The island collides with another continent creating a massive tsunami, wreaking havoc in the area, yet providing a convenient way for our friends to begin exploring a new world completely separate from the continents explored in the first Golden Sun. The shift of focus from Isaac, Garrett, and Mia, and Ivan to the group who had previously been our antagonists felt very stark. I really hadn't expected this turning of the tables that would pit my four heroes as antagonists of my new protagonists. This feels incredibly unique and in hindsight, it is an incredibly smart way from a game design perspective. The shift of focus allows Felix and Jenna to tell their side of the story, so to speak, and the way that they do that is also really smart. They never go out of their way to provide you with the lore dump to catch viewers up to speed. I was convinced for the first few hours of the game that I was just playing the bad guys trying to destroy the world. But actions speak louder than words, and gradually the game reveals through the actions and candid conversations what's truly going on. Golden Sun The Lost Age accomplishes something that in my personal experience has been awfully rare. A sympathetic antagonist with whom I can actually sympathize. Several of them, in fact. Even eventually, the motivations of the villains of the game are revealed, and their motivations are completely understandable, even if their methods were dubious at best. It's refreshing to come away from the game that felt rather simplistic in the first entry with a completely different perspective by the end of the second. The Lost Age did a wonderful job of building upon the first Golden Sun in a way that I really could not have expected, and was a truly welcome surprise. The Lost Age features a pretty standard turn-based combat system that is nearly identical to the first Golden Sun, though the Jin system has been expanded and refined upon. The Jin system adds several layers of strategy to combat, as players can mix and match different Jin to create different combinations of abilities and stats. Players also can use Jin to unleash powerful summon attacks, which can deal massive amounts of damage to enemies, and there are a lot of new summons out there. Some of the best ones come from finding stone tablets hidden away in different corners of the world, locked behind super boss fights, but they are as fun to acquire as they are to use in combat against the next boss. Another carryover from Golden Sun is the return of the heavy emphasis on puzzle solving. Throughout the game, players will encounter a wide variety of puzzles that require them to use synergy to progress, a portmanteau of psychic and energy. These abilities allow players to move objects, revealing hidden paths, and solve various other types of puzzles. The puzzles of the game range from simple tasks, such as moving blocks, to more complex challenges that require careful planning and strategy. The dungeons of Golden Sun The Lost Age are similarly brain-teasing and are laid out as a series of puzzles. Navigating your way through them often feels like untying a knot bit by bit as you make your way further into each dungeon, unlocking new shortcuts along the way as you sort out another layer of the knot. The sense of progression and the aha moments of figuring out the tricky puzzles were worth it in the end and felt incredibly satisfying, only seldom dipping into the realm of being maybe a little too tricky, but overall it was really balanced. The Lost Age takes place in the same world as the first Golden Sun, and the game's world map technically contains the lands explored in the first game, though they are inaccessible in the Lost Age. Instead, the game introduces new continent and islands that the player can explore, which is filled with a variety of locations and environments for them to dive into, such as caves, elemental mountains, and of course, the lighthouses that our heroes are seeking out. An improvement over the first Golden Sun, I think, is the world presented as full of distinct towns and islands, each of which has its own unique culture and atmosphere. Dyla is a town located on the continent of Gondwan, started off as a hideout for pirates. 
Al-Hafra is a port town under the rule of the money-grubbing and conniving mayor. Garo is a town located on the continent of Gondwan and has an absolutely haunting theme that complements the town's true theme hidden beneath the surface. These details help create a sense of both depth and believability within the game's world. As believable as it can be anyway, given that the world is literally a disc floating in space with water rushing off the sides forever. But this is a world of magic, I suppose, so it works. It makes for a beautiful display of magic and wonder. The music in The Lost Age is characterized by its epic sweeping themes and energetic battle tracks. Composer Matoi Sakuraba always has a knack of creating memorable melodies and captivating soundscapes, and he brings these skills to bear in The Lost Age. The game's overworld in particular is a standout track that captures the sense of adventure and exploration that is central to the game's experience. The music that plays during boss battles is fast-paced and intense, helping to build tension and excitement, while the game's emotional and more tender moments are accompanied by music that helps convey the feelings of the characters and enhances the impact of these scenes. Overall, the music of Golden Sun The Lost Age is an integral part of the game's experience and it serves to enhance the atmosphere. Again though, I can't help but lament the overall compressed sound coming from the Game Boy Advance, but that's just the nature of this beast. I just sometimes can't help but wonder how things might have been different had the Game Boy Advance had the Super Nintendo sound chip instead. However, despite these limitations, the music of Golden Sun The Lost Age is still able to convey a sense of epic scale. On the visual side of things, during combat, Golden Sun The Lost Age features detailed character sprites and vibrant colorful attack animations. The different attack animations for critical hits are a spectacle of blows that change in appearance based on the weapon currently equipped, but each new animation makes you hungry to find the next special weapon. Summons are every bit as special as in the original Golden Sun, but cranked up even further with a new arsenal of even stronger summons featuring epic animations more befitting of a console experience such as the PlayStation 1 or similar. Spectacular. Outside of combat, each town has its own unique layout and design that reflects the culture and atmosphere of each of the towns, a bit of an improvement in my experience over the original. The world map is colorful and detailed and it features a variety of terrain types and locations that the player can explore. As the player travels through the game, they'll encounter a variety of different environments such as forests, mountains, beaches, each with its own unique visual style that then informs what the backgrounds will look like during combat, very similar to how things worked in the original Golden Sun. Overall, Golden Sun The Lost Age is Golden Sun 1, but bigger and brighter and more open for exploration. That big open-ended nature will be a huge boon to some, but I suspect that it could very easily overwhelm the younger players it was designed for back in the day. And for the older audience, without the endless summer vacations to play away, consulting a strategy guide for some helpful hints might be a wise course of action. Golden Sun The Lost Age made good on so many of the promises made by its predecessor, driving the series forward by leaps and bounds. And with the way things wrapped up, I'm incredibly excited to see what could happen with Golden Sun Dark Dawn for Nintendo DS. If they made this kind of progress in just a single game, imagine what they could do with an upgraded handheld system known for its RPG selection. It's gotta be fantastic, right? Well, I hope to find out soon, but until then, I can confidently say that Golden Sun The Lost Age is definitely worthy of its newfound spot in the game collection.